we've had the shiv in the oven for two and a half hours now at temperature. I started the clock whenever it actually hit 1650. So we're at just over two and a half hours. This is what our part looks like coming directly out of the heat treat oven after the quench. And of course I've just, I've washed it off in my uh, cleaning, cleaning tank. It's got a very interesting looking texture to it. So I'm going to do some measurements and see where our dimensions are now. And then I want to clean it. Probably going to do like a wire brush on it, especially the faces because I want to go to the um, hardness tester and do a check on it and see where the hardness is at and we still have to temper it that'll be coming up next after we uh, you know after I clean it and then check the hardness Definitely gotten harder than what it was. It's uh, something ruined that tool. Uh, maybe my readings aren't correct on my uh, what I'm getting over on the tester. interesting you definitely see some harder spots in there it's weird let's try that again with a ceramic insert We got her cut. I wanted to get that. I wanted to get the sides cleaned up, and then I'm going to check it again on the hardness tester. So after facing the uh, the shiv off each side there, we haven't we haven't uh, tempered it yet. You can see I've done another test in uh, one spot and we're getting 42. So I think that's a good sign. I believe that when I'm doing these tests after they come out of the oven, there's like a there's a little soft core on the outside, a little scale that I'm measuring that's giving me false readings. So. It could be what's going on so this is good you know I could tell that it was pretty tough 
So that's showing 42. There's a there's an area right here that almost feels like it's raised. It's uh, maybe a little harder. So I'm gonna do a test there and see. And then from that, we're gonna go do the temper. I'm just trying to find out what what is the hardness I'm getting after I do the heat treat and quench before I do a temper. Yeah, to my suspicion, that uh, area there, that almost feels like it's raised up. It's harder than the rest of it. It's showing 62 on the, uh, the Rockwell tester now. So we may be getting some better results than what I originally thought. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, do the temper now. All right, we've got our annealing done there. I flapped the ID out and it still fits on this mandrel pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna go forward with my plan. We're just gonna skim the OD, skin the groove there to clean it up, make it look good. And then from there, I'll go back to the three jaw on the other lathe since it's set up and uh, finish this bore out for the bearing. So we're just touching that sidewall. I touched off and it moved over five thousandths just to clean it up. That's all we're trying to do is just get everything running true with each other. do a hand feed this last little bit in here. Just hand feeding it over to the other side just to help blend that radius in. All right, and then we're gonna back out. That did good, it looks nice. We'll go ahead and re-hit our chamfers and then that part will be done. Okay, set up in the three jaw. We're gonna go ahead and finish this bore out here. I do have a stop in there. We're gonna have a little shoulder that'll actually, uh, we'll press the bearing against and it'll keep it centered. I'm running a little slow just to try to help prevent burning up that tool. Looks like it's doing pretty good though. 
So this is our actual bearing. It is it is a cylindrical uh, cylindrical roller bearing, and our OD is going to be 52 millimeters inside here. Of course, I'm going to give it. Um, I'm going to shoot for half to one thousandths total interference fit where it presses in there. This should be my finished cut here. Taking 13 thousandths out of it. And that target is shooting for uh, a one thou interference. All right, I think I hit my target. I'm gonna just do a double check here. I always check it two or three times and compare my readings to make sure that I'm there. So I made it. We are we are on size right there. So that'll give us a uh, one thou interference press fit on that bearing there. Put another chamfer here. So here's our second shiv. I've already done the heat treat on it and the temper and I uh, got it cooled down, wire brushed everything and then I tempered it. So I'm going to go ahead and start getting this one machined. You've already seen what I'm going to do. So I'm going to just repeat the uh, cycle as I did with this one here. The only difference is I didn't face it before I did the temper. I wanted to go ahead and uh, get it tempered and hopefully uh, and then and then get it faced after that. So I may set this one up and go ahead and just uh, you know skin a few thousandths off each side just to get rid of the discoloration on that because again the thickness is not uh, critical on this application right here. All right, so I'm gonna go get this one done and uh, we'll bring you back and and uh, show you when it's done. Okay. Alright, both of our shivs are now done and the uh, first one that I done what I had, you know, you see the coloration from the temper on the side, went ahead and took another two thousandths off each side just to clean that up. So now we have two that are identical there. And so this is the bearing that's going in there. This is a cylindrical roller bearing, um, specifically made, you know, for taking uh, very high radial loads. Alright, so um, I've only got one bearing, so I'm going to go ahead and get one of these. I'm going to go ahead and press it into one of them, at least get that done. And I, apparently he's going to get the other bearing and, and press it himself. This is a little piece of shafting that I had on the shelf that 
it was already drilled. I just drilled it out a little bit bigger and I'll use this as the tool that will uh, press that in there. So it's not touching the inner race. We're only pushing on the outer race as we press it in there. That'll get it done real quick. That'd just be a real simple press job. I thought about putting this in the oven and warming it up and dropping it in there, but that's just gonna take more time. But that is another way that you can install that bearing, warm this thing up and drop it in there. Uh, before we do that though, I'm gonna go ahead and test the hardness of both of them. And instead of using the other tester that I've already shown, I'm gonna be using this right here. This is one that I've got from uh, PTC Instruments. It's the Model 316 uh, for Rockwell C hardness testing. This is a portable unit. Well, John over there at PTC Instruments. And this is what it looks like. I showed this a while back, but this is what the unit looks like right here. It's got a little mag light with a little light that comes down and, and illuminates down here. So you have to, what you have to do is set this down on your punch mark. So that's the scope anyway, the scope and the light. And the, the tool, the kit comes equipped with this uh, spring-loaded center with a carbide ball on there. And this is all calibrated so that you uh, put a punch mark on here with the ball and then you set this on here and then measure it. There's, a, there's some lines inside the scope there and uh, you, you set the, let me just go ahead and show you, there's a, this is exactly what it looks like when you're looking down inside there. So this round ball looking thing, that's actually your divot made by the spring-loaded center here. And it's calibrated for this unit here. So you line up the bottom of the divot on this line here, and all you do is just visually measure where the top of the, you know, the top of the radius is, the other side of the ball, and then you kind of gauge it there. So this one, you know, being between 30 and 35 Rockwell, if you see where the top of the circle is there. All right, so it'll get you really close, you know, within a probably a couple if you're uh, if you're lined up here. So this tool instrument also came with the calibration puck right here as well, where they actually calibrated it. Uh, I mean, checked it, used the calibration. There's a calibration certificate right here that goes along with it whenever you buy one of these units right here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and check these. I'm gonna check both of them. I'm just gonna go right near the middle here and That's all it is, just one little divot. And so we'll turn this on, let me see. Okay, now it's on, you can see the light coming through the bottom there. And you just line it up and it's real fidgety. Now, I'm not gonna be able to show you this, but you just line it up on the bottom here, I'll turn it around, you can see it a little better. So best thing to do is just kind of visually uh, without looking down through the scope, try to line the center of the divot up in that hole. And then you look down through the scope and then you can see it and then you start lining it up. So let me go ahead and do that and we'll get a reading on uh, what this is, okay? So as you're looking down through there, it, uh, it really matters which way this uh, scope is positioned on there. One way is a little darker, so if you flip it around about 90 degrees, you can find that it's a lot brighter as you look down through there. So I've got it lined up and it's kind of funny because it actually, I can tell by looking down through there that the very middle of the radius is in between the tool marks or either on top of the tool mark. And it's almost like there's a little flat on the top and the bottom of the ball. If you was looking at this, it would almost look like there's a little tiny flat there and a little tiny flat there. But gauging from what I'm seeing here, we are at 45 Rockwell on this one. It actually could be just a touch lower if I'm looking at a little bit of a flat there. So we could be somewhere between 33 and 30, I'm sorry, 43 and 44 Rockwell. Because it is between the uh, 40, it's, it's near touching the 45 mark on the, uh, we'll use this as our reference. So there's a 45 line right there and my, the top of the ball is touching there. All right, so we're gonna call it around 45, maybe 44 Rockwell on this guy right here. So we'll go ahead and move over and do this one now. This 
one looks a little skewed. It's not like it's not a nice round divot. I'm going to do that again. We're not going to use that one there. Maybe I had it at an angle or something that didn't punch straight down. That's more like it. That one looks better right there. Yep. It's just below the 40, between 40 and 45. So I'm going to have to call out one at 40. We're going to say 41 Rockwell on this one. So this one was around 44, 45. This one being 41. That's really cool too, man. That's just it's really interesting looking down and seeing so close to that that surface. You can see you can see what the finish looks like on there. You can see the tool marks in there. It's really amazing. Very cool. I wish I could get a picture. I tried to snap one over here and uh, show you, but it just, you know, it's hard to for a camera to focus on this on this lens here. All right. So, we're going to go ahead and move on to uh, pressing our bearing in now. I was real curious and wanted to go ahead and, and check the uh, hardness over here on this hardness tester as well. This is the second one where I said that I was at uh, approximately 40 to 41 Rockwell. And this one confirms that I was very close. So I'm getting on this scale, it's showing 39 and a half. So you got to give yourself, I think, a couple of points on uh, you know doing these tests like I'm doing here. So. That's putting me right in range of where I test it over there using the, uh, the PTC hardness tester. Right, let's get this bearing pressed in here. I'm going to use this to just kind of square it up, square the face up anyway. This is uh, this is two inch, so it'll just slide down inside that bore there. We'll just line it up on the outside of the race. And we should be ready to go. There it is, nice and easy. Nice, that was a nice press fit right there. This guy is ready to go. Awesome. Well, this job is finally done. Uh, the only thing we need is just another bearing to press into this, but Apparently he's going to do that because he only had the one bearing. I think he had to order one. But anyway, we're going to um, we're going to go ahead and and call him and let him know so he can get his septic tank lowering machine back in order. And I wanted to point out a couple things again. You know, we um, you know I showed this right here, the uh, PTC Instruments Model 316 hardness tester. If uh, you're looking for a nice little portable unit where you can do this, you know, in your own shop, this would be a good little unit to get right there. It doesn't take up a lot of room. You can put it right there in your uh, tool toolbox. This is another nice little tool to have here. This is the uh, hardness tester files, and I bought these from KBC Tools. So, you know, it goes everywhere, uh, anywhere from 40 to 65. And like I was using this a little bit ago off camera. You can use this just to kind of verify things, you know, doing those scratch tests. So this being a 40, it's not making any marks on there. It's just sliding across the surface there. All right. So you can pull this 45 out and it's not cutting. It's starting to make a little, little marks on the face there though. So this is a nice little alternative. If you don't have a hardness tester, these won't break the bank either. You can go over to KBC and pick you up a set of these right here. Uh, right there. All right. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the project and uh, we got to go ahead and get started on some more. So we'll see you on the next job. All right.